Okay, so I'm gonna show you the cheapest and easiest way to do a curbless shower. Schluter, uh, which is not known for their cheapness, actually came out with some great pans that are only one inch thick. So all it requires is you to the reduce the, the area within your shower by three quarters of an inch by uh, removing the plywood and recessing that plywood and then using a quarter inch Dietra mat to meet up with this shower system. Okay, so I just wanted to rewind here a little bit and show you what the bathroom looked like before. As you could tell, uh, it was just a builder's grade bathroom. It was just a newer home built in the 1990s, so it wasn't really too tremendously difficult to demo. And it was basically just four by four basic tile. Uh, so we ended up removing that big knee wall in between. It took a lot of extra room. And then that large soaking tub with the frame. That's always ends up being a lot bigger than you want it to be. So removing that's going to open up a lot of space. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, as you can see here, we have some truss joists here. We're 24 inches on center. So the first thing we're going to do is use some two by fours and recess this below the truss area. So what we'll do is we've got some plumbing in the way here, so we need to make some adjustment cuts here. Okay, so then we got some three quarter inch OSB and we're gonna use this as a reference to the top of our joist here. So we just basically use this plywood as a, as a template or a, uh, a gauge for how far down this joist needs to be. Now we're gonna use some 16 penny nails. So if you don't have a nail gun, you can always use screws. I would recommend using three inch deck screws if you're gonna actually use that. Um, so pretty simple, just a matter of uh, recessing those two by fours below the surface so that you can put plywood even with those truss joists. Okay, so with the Schluter pans, everything needs to be 16 inches on center. So as you can see right now, we got 20 in, we got 20 inches in between here. So this is too much deflection underneath here. So we're going to have to put some blocking in between here. So we'll run basically 17 inch pieces all the way across. Okay, so toe nailing the uh, two by fours in place is really all you need for this. Just making sure that they're even with that new two by four you have recessed below the floor. And to keep in mind, this uh, blocking is primarily to prevent deflection in between the joists. When you have too much space in between a joist, the three quarter and plywood can actually bow down. And that's what this is uh, preventing from happening. And like I said, Schluter wants the framing to be 16 inches on center. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now, when you do a drain area, you want to cut a hole that's four and a half inches around that drain. That gives you enough wiggle room when you put the drain in to move that around slightly. And then just nailing every eight inches or so. Now the next step would actually be to install the curdy board. Uh, we actually have a video, look at the description in below, uh, that goes over this detail. But I like to put all the wall board up, get the niche and all of that curdy band set up before doing the pan. Okay, so we're going to be doing Dietra heat, the Dietra heat mat inside the shower. So one of the things you have to do to make sure that the spacing is correct is to cut out a piece of this membrane so that you can sit it underneath of your drain so that this is going to be raised up to the Dietra heat level. Wipe down your substrate with a damp sponge. Get all this dust off of here. Definitely helps. Okay, so you want to use a quarter by three eighths inch square notch trowel for setting the pan. First thing you want to do is burn the thin set into the substrate with the flat side of the trowel and then use directional troweling with the thin set. And then you want to make sure you take out that donut out of the pan before setting it in place. Okay, then you want to put your donut in here. Okay, then we needed to extend that pan out another two inches. Primarily the reason we had to do this is because the drain was not centered. So putting in a, a, a piece like this that's under two inches, not a big deal for slope. 
you just want to be sure when you before you use the drain you want to put those foam spacers in on top of that detra you want to make sure you fill in that waffle and add plenty of thin set for that bonding uh, foam spacer so at this point you can measure down into your drain to the top of the flange I did forget that this was ABS so I got a, a PVC drain so what you want to use is the transition cement from uh, PVC to ABS and be sure to apply a liberal amount on the hub of the flange and then also the pipe riser fitting as well and I like to twist it in a little bit make sure that that's really well sealed now it would have been better to have an ABS uh, flange for that but make sure that you use ABS cement for ABS fittings so just add some to your tailpiece and some inside that drain and then I like to twist this and make sure that you got plenty of thin set coming around this flange okay and then the Dieter heat mat we want to cut cut the circle out of where our flange is okay so I got got that on the pan now you want to make sure that you have an expansion contraction at joint against the wall so I would cut this back a little bit it doesn't have to be tight to the wall because you can't you can't really put the wire tight up against the wall anyways okay so I had a little bit of movement with my plumbing and it's having an issue keeping this flange up it's kind of a common problem so I put my zip wall thing on here as you can see so you can see it's just a zip wall piece so that's gonna help me just hold this in place once the thin set uh, grab the hold of this flange and it's set tomorrow it'll be fine but uh, for right now I just wanted to ensure that I have you know that this flange is held down well enough now I'm gonna have to take this off so I can thin set for a little bit okay so for the Dieter heat mat you want to use a quarter by quarter inch square notch trial so we'll do that and just apply more thin set to my pan Okay, so same concept as setting the pan itself. You just want to use directional trialing with the thin set and making sure that your thin set is at the wettest ratio for membranes. Uh, using a grout float really helps make sure that everything is nice and embedded into that thin set. So you can see how my flange is popping up on me here. So that's where I'm going to just use my zip wall pull and just put a little bit of pressure on that. So now that once that thin set adheres there it'll it'll hold that all in place okay so I'm not gonna have time to set the wire today so I'm just gonna make sure I wipe off any of this excess thin set and then you just fill in the rest of that shower pan area with some scrap pieces of the Dieter heat. Now the next step is to install the Dieter heat mat on the outside floor with all the same concepts of how we installed it on the shower pan. But in our next video, we're going to give you some guidelines on installing the wire and testing. That is super important. So please subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.